You know, I have to admit, I kind of used to be a Charles Leclerc fanboy back in the day. I don't know what it was, maybe his inspirational sob story to the top of F1, his driving skills, or the fact that he's a good looking guy. Wait, no, no. Anyway, since the dawn of time, it's been commonly thought that Charles would be Ferrari's golden boy. The one prophesied to restore the prancing horse's glory. And you know what? That was a reasonable thing to say. He was fast, plain and simple. He absolutely whooped Sebastian Vettel while they were teammates and sent the guy on his way to retirement. But over the years, Charles has also shown some of his weaknesses. The main one being his inability to go wheel to wheel with literally any car. Now, I'm not saying he's a bad driver. What I am saying, however, is during his battle with Verstappen in 2022, he drove like a pussy. He started strong, but as the season progressed, Charles seemed to forget the old legend legendary Senna quote. And if you no longer go for a gap that exists, you're no longer a racing driver. He didn't go for gaps. And when he did, approximately 20 minutes later, you could expect to hear something along the lines of Who's that got off? It's Leclerc. It's Leclerc. Leclerc. No! Anyway, after 360 spin kicking his 2022 season into the bin, it was apparent that Charles wasn't doing very well. So I entered the deepest depths of my mind my long forgotten memories, longing for another Ferrari driver to support. And I found this. Well, no, that's fine. That can stay there, no. Yes, this one, the other guy. Carlos Sainz. Now, when Sainz first pulled up to Ferrari in 2021, he beat Leclerc fair and square. But at the same time, Charles was very unlucky at times that year. For example, in Monaco, he took pole but couldn't start the race due to his clapped gearbox and of course, Ferrari being Ferrari, left it in there after a hefty crash the previous day in qualifying. But still, since it was of course Carlos's first year at the circus, his performances and consistency that year wasn't half bad. But then 2022 came around and he developed this crippling addiction to the substance called gravel. And ultimately, this made him look like the most clear second driver out there. Sure, he won his first race last year in Silverstone and it was awesome to witness, but it was ultimately overshadowed by just the most boring, mediocre season he could ever have. Anyway, while at the time when it came to performance, Carlos was an absolute anomaly, nobody on God's green earth had any idea where this man was at. These days, he's managed to clear all that up quite nicely indeed. As it stands, science is in a pretty damn good place. Crucially ahead of his teammate, Chuck Leclerc. So far, this year, he's been fast and consistent, and while up until about two races ago, it was hard to decide who exactly was performing better, I think even your mentally challenged hamster could call it now. In Monza, the iconic track synonymous with Ferrari and other things, Carlos put in a simply lovely lap in Q3 to take pole away from Verstappen. Now, of course, he didn't win the race. Well, what do you think? This is some kind of inspirational story? No, sit back down. He scored a podium. Now, coming from pole, that doesn't sound like all too much, but when you remember that at the time, Max was toying with the rest of the grid and literally breaking records like it was nothing, you realized that third place was the best possible result in that Ferrari. And better yet for Sainz, he also raced the hell out of Leclerc and eventually beat him to the podium. But while that was a good weekend, what followed was on another level entirely. When facing literally the most dominant car in Formula 1 history, getting pole position once is already an achievement in itself. But two in a row? You're basically world champion at that point. And that's precisely what science managed in Singapore. Now, that's all swell and good, but as we all know, pole doesn't matter unless you make something of it in the race. And if you don't, it turns the whole situation ass up and it becomes more of an embarrassment, if anything. But I'm glad to say that wasn't the case for Carlos at all. From the beginning of the race, this guy took control. His teammate right behind him on softer tires couldn't even manage to get ahead. Now, I won't lie, I kind of dozed off after after about lap 9 since nothing was happening. But I woke back up after Sergeant decided to do his usual thing and dive head first into the track barriers. Anyway, more laps went by, Ocon served his mandatory 30 year stop go penalty and because of that there was yet another safety car. This is where things began to change. You see, since Carlos already pit for new hards after Sergeant smooching with the barriers incident, he did the traditional thing when leading a race on a street circuit. He stood out because he wanted to retain track position. But the Mercedes boys, on the other hand, had other plans. Both Lewis and George flew into those pits and changed to some fresh new medium tires and came back out in fourth and fifth place. Now, with a fairly decent size gap to close, the race was on. 
A couple of laps later, Russell and Hamilton managed to get by Leclerc, who was just straight up dying on those hard tires. And at this point, it seemed that the win was slowly but surely going Russell's direction. However, here is where Carlos whipped out the surprises. Now, I've never seen Sainz dictate a race like he did in Singapore, so obviously I had no clue what he'd be like or how he'd handle the pressure. When Hamilton and Russell inevitably caught up with Carlos and Lando in P1 and P2, there was now just over a second separating four cars. I mean, guys, come on, we haven't seen this kind of racing since like the beginning of last year. So you'd imagine I was in the middle of crapping my pants with one question on my mind. Who would come out on top? In the final laps of the race, Carlos, out of freaking nowhere, decided he was now prime Schumacher and pulled a 3 million IQ drive till the end of the race. He used Lando as a DRS wall to block George and Lewis from getting to him, while also giving Lando enough DRS to stay ahead himself. All on some hard tires that were about as run down as the lizards on track. This guy took multitasking to another level. Eventually, Osama bin Russell just couldn't handle it anymore and gave in to his natural instinct and just ended it all there and then. And oh yeah, Carlos also managed to win the race. Okay, cool, so he won a second race. Does that mean he's now Ferrari's leading driver? Well, obviously he is leading in the standings and there aren't many races to go at this point. Providing he continues this form, which I'm not sure he will, but let's see, then yeah, I do think he can be Ferrari's number one driver for the next few races. No, you see, you have to bring it back to the basics. Ferrari are heavily invested in Leclerc. And why is that? Because he's freaking fast. What's with these dumbass questions? Who's asking? Oh, no, wait, never mind. He's shown his speed in his exceptional junior career. And on paper, even the Carlos fanboys have to reluctantly admit, Charles is the better driver. Now, is that the case in practice? At the moment, Clearly not. But as good as Carlos has been driving lately, quite frankly, it just hasn't been enough to warrant flipping a whole team's dynamic over its head just yet. But given time, I think the possibility is very much open. Anyway, that's about all I've got to say. Like and subscribe if you want to see more of whatever this is, and with that, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.